Hello, BookTube. It's my Portland book haul. This is from uh, from um, Powell's and Wallace bookstores, respectively. So let's just jump right into it. Um, they're all mixed together. First up, Poe. Some the narrative of Arthur Gordon Pym of Nantucket. Uh, it's it's uh, Poe's only uh, kind of I think full length novel work. I've actually read it before, but I just I saw it and I was like, oh, I want a copy because I sort of I've gone off the wagon. I've gone off the wagon. I'm I bought a ton of books, physical books, which is what I was not doing the thing, but I hadn't been doing before. I was going electronic. I was transcending material possessions, and then I went to Portland, and I just regressed. I I fell back. I fell off the the wagon, something like that, and I just started buying books. So that's that's it. Next one I got was Kim Kim Stanley Robin Robbins. Uh, Robinson's uh, 2312, which is, uh, I just, I've recently read Aurora, which is actually excerpt in the back of this, so this is previous to Aurora, um, science fiction book. Um, Robinson is uh, part of the great, great explainers, uh, the guys who make explaining, who make the info dump, is an art form, uh, something that you, you, if you are into that sort of thing, you enjoy because they're really good at, in, at explaining things. It's not surprising that fellows like this can sometimes go off into uh, writing nonfiction books and become incredibly successful because they've got they've got that the, the talent of making explaining stuff uh, very enjoyable to do. Uh, the thing with Ken Stanley Robinson is he can actually write. He's got a he's got a lovely way that, with a sentence, and he actually make he actually does write characters that you care about. So while there are these info dumps, uh, which are you know very for Bolton in the uh, kind of realist, let's pair everything back, let's not call attention to our our perfect illusion of the thing, um, whereas, you know, maybe the Europeans or other other traditions are much more, hey, here's an essay in the middle of my novel, and I don't really care. And it's funny how you see in, like, early novels that that, that, that happens. A Moby Dick is a big example of that, where it suddenly sops, and I'm going to explain the whaling industry to you. So, yes, I, I decided it's another standalone from him. Uh, I've got, I think, the start of his uh, Martian trilogy, this massive three-book tome book, which I think each book is much longer, bigger than these, and I just don't feel up to it. So I thought I'd get this one in, um, so I could get get a little scratch a little bit more of that itch. The next book is The Brothers Karamazov. Yet another copy. This is actually a hard copy, copy uh, paper copy of the Constant uh, Garnet uh, version, the 1912 Constant Garnet translation, which is the one I'm actually reading at the moment. This book was super cheap, so I decided, hey, I'd get it so I'd have a physical copy that I could bookmark, and I can kind of flip through, and I can put little sticky notes in, and uh, just with something so big as like this, I, I seem to have collected a bunch of copies of it. Though, you know, the thing is, when I'm done, I'll probably just release it back into the wild, so this, I, you know, with, it, with, it, with all this stuff. Uh, the next book I got was uh, the John, was Jonathan Swift's uh, Gulliver's Travels. I uh, there was a whole bunch of different versions at the Wallace Bookstore, which I've taken this video. I took I took a film, filmed it, and it's like it's just me going through books, bookcase after bookcase after bookcase. I, I, I went so far as uploading it, but I haven't made it public, and I probably aren't because I'm not going to because it's, it's just a bunch of bookcases filled with lovely, lovely books, and you can hear me oh, sighing in the background, so it's all very disconcerting. So yes, I got Gulliver's Travels. I'm at the moment reading... Uh, Jonathan Swift, His Life and His World by uh, Leo Damarash. I've almost done that, and it's a really great book. It really puts um, Jonathan Swift in his time, uh, the politics, the history, uh, the so society, the just like basically how he lived, uh, doing a really great job with that. And with someone like, with someone like uh, Swift, who is so particularly commenting on that in his book, while obviously making more general statements about humanity, which is why people are still reading this. Uh, I thought I, this is a great time to pick this up and do a reread. So uh, yeah, I picked up that. That was a great thing. Uh, next book I got was The God of Small Things by Roy. I don't, is it Arundhati, Arundhati Roy? I'll have to learn that if I actually do a review of it. Um, her latest book, her second book, I believe, has just come, has come out and has gotten a lot of praise and People seem to be talking about, like, wow, this is the best book of the year. So I'm right on the cusp of all that with, hey, this is a perfect time to pick up this one and read it and see what all the fuss was about. Because I, I, I firmly believe that when the iron is hot, I let it cool down 
and let's see if anyone's actually still talking about this book. And they're still talking about this one, so I thought, yeah, it's worth picking up and having a read. Um, speaking of books like that, I got uh, Mary Adora Russell's The Sparrow, which is uh, science fiction. It's kind of, sounds like religious science fiction. Um, this is uh, very much a um, sort of about Father Emil Stando, Stando's, uh, the only survivor of a Jesuit mission to the planet um, Rad... Rack hat. Well, something like that. They always have names you can't pronounce. But yeah, so I thought I'd, I'd give that a try. I've, I've heard people talk about it a lot as like one of their real favorites. And, you know, so that's uh, that's another one I uh, another one I picked up. And the final one from this book, Paul, book haul part two of my Portland trip is uh, Charles Bukowski's Burning in Water, Drowning in Flame, Selected Poems from 1953 to 1973. And uh, I've read only one other thing of Bukowski, which was a collection of his poems. Uh, it's uh, the poems at the end of the world, the earth. Uh, I can't remember what it is now, but it was his late poems, 2002. Um, and I really enjoyed that. And so I thought, OK, I, you know, he's got a lot of stuff. So I figured I'd just pick up the selected works, maybe cut out the chaff and and uh, give that a read. I think the last one I read very slowly, kind of poem by poem a day. Uh, and that was the way to do it. it. Really got. I don't know if he's like a poetic guy, but in in the flowery language or intense thing. But he has a voice, and uh, sometimes I just really enjoy uh, that kind of a intimate kind of intimate voice and uh, hearing it. You could really, really, I could really hear it in his uh, later poem. So I'm looking forward to that as something as a long, slow read, which then will be probably incredibly hard for me to review on this channel, but. Who knows, I might give it a shot. So yes, that's Book Hall Part 1. There is a Book Hall Part 2, uh, which is actually not Portland. It's going to be uh, Whidbey, Whidbey Island at a thrift store, which was, oh my god. Well, I'll talk about that later. More videos later.